How nice would it be if you and your friends all woke up and they found a castle full of treasure, diamonds and weapons and swords and all the goodies you can imagine. While you're looking at all of your treasures, you ask yourself, where did this all come from? You know that swords don't grow on trees and you know that diamonds don't have a mom and a dad. So how did they all get here? You know, thousands of years ago, scientists also stumbled across some wondrous treasure, except it looked a lot different than yours. Actually, it just looked like a bunch of rocks. These rocks, however, were found to have many different properties, and scientists found them much more useful than just throwing them at their siblings. The first rock they found was a type of carbon that's found deep in the Earth's crust. When this rock reaches about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit and 75,000 pounds of pressure are applied on it, then we find what's called a diamond. Now, as you guys know, diamonds are very valuable, not just because of the way they look or how you can wear them as jewelry, um, but also how functional they are. Diamonds have unique properties where it makes them very hard to chip and break under extreme pressure. Diamonds are one of the hardest materials that you can use, and a lot of people use them to make diamond drill bits and other kind of tools that they need to be really durable. So. Diamonds became very valuable and modern day scientists decided that they wanted to try and make a diamond, not just mine it from the ground where they're not as populated, but instead try to make it in a lab. Now many scientists tried to do this and through various experiments they weren't able to quite do it, but one remained successful. A scientist by the name of Russell J. Henley actually was able to do this. First, he starts by getting out a diamond seed. Now, even though diamonds don't grow on the ground, they can have what they call a diamond seed, which is a very small piece of carbon, just so the machine has something to grow off of. Then they put that little diamond seed into the machine and heat it up super hot, about 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. And they also inject it with a lot of methane gas, which is very high in carbon. That methane gas is then ionized into plasma kind of in a similar way to how your microwaves work, but I wouldn't recommend putting a rock in a microwave. I don't think it'd quite do the same thing. What this machine does is it breaks down the methane gas into smaller pieces, and then those smaller pieces, such as the carbon in the methane gas, can stick to that diamond seed, and it continues to grow and grow and grow, and more carbon sticks to the carbon, and more carbon sticks to the carbon, and then bada bing, bada boom, with a few other processes, you got a diamond. So here, this man took something that used to only be able to be found in the ground, and he got things, other things from the earth, like little small pieces of carbon or graphite or methane gas, everything that you can find in the earth, and he put it in a controlled lab, and we were able to make a whole new material. Now, this whole new material is genetically similar to a diamond, but it's a lot more clear, and it has a lot less impurities. So it's pretty cool. It might even be better than a diamond that you'd find in the ground. This wasn't the only rock that old scientists thousands of years ago found valuable. They also found iron, which we're pretty familiar with. We've heard of iron. However, one pesky property that it has is that it rusts. And so modern day scientists decided to try to find a metal that was like iron, but it didn't rust. Now, after looking and looking and looking for this special metal, instead, some people just decided, heck, why don't we just try to make it ourselves? What scientists discovered is called stainless steel. This is a mix of iron, carbon, and chromium. The chromium in the steel reacts with oxygen, and when it does that, it creates this clear film that entirely coats the metal. This prevents it from the iron touching the oxygen from rusting it. And so this clear layer tends to perfect the stainless steel and give it that smooth finish without the rust. That was another huge treasure to modern day. We use stainless steel in appliances all over utensils, almost every kind of metal you find in the home, it's stainless steel. You might think to yourself, you know, finding diamonds is way more cool than finding steel that doesn't rust, but you'd be surprised. We use stainless steel way more than we use diamond. It's way more practical and was probably one of the inventions that really propelled us into the future. Now, one of the most underestimated inventions of all time it isn't the diamond, it isn't the stainless steel, but in fact, if you look in this picture very closely, you'll find the room that it's in is made of concrete. Now, concrete isn't something that you find underground. It's not something that you dig up and you find big chunks of, and it's actually created by chemists and scientists. That's right, one of the most important inventions to civilization is actually concrete. 
Now concrete you can't dig up from the ground and find it in your parents' backyard. I mean, maybe you can, but it's not a natural material that comes from the earth. It was actually made by scientists. So these scientists, they got a whole bunch of different kinds of rocks together, including limestone and different clays, and they ground them all up into a powder, and then they found when they add water to that powder, it slowly hardens and becomes incredibly strong. So now all of our buildings, all of our infrastructure, roads, sidewalks are all made of concrete. Now, this is a modern day miracle. The thing that most people wouldn't consider treasure is. In conclusion, there's treasure all around us in diamonds in stainless steel and even in concrete. So whether you're finding your treasure in the ground or you're making it in the lab, anything is possible.